John, we're back. Uh, didn't you apply the same concept to some of your cancer patients with the gynecological type cancer? Well, uh, yes, but uh, it took a little while. I wasn't uh, thinking of that at, at the time. I was happy to find that this natural product was working for uh, bones, but it was from these patients that I found that uh, the um, Remember, I was giving these to people who had breast cancer previously or had cancer of the uterus and therefore couldn't take estrogen, and this is why they were just on progesterone. Yes. And later I applied it to the people with estrogen, and as the years went by, I realized my patients weren't getting the breast cancer. Remember, the breast cancer risk started to rise, and they now tell us that one out of eight women, if they live long enough, are going to have breast cancer. My it patients didn't were, didn't happen. My patients uh, didn't get uh, endometrial cancer. My patients didn't get cancer of the ovary. And then I stumbled across in 1981, I think it was, um, a reference from Johns Hopkins, and uh, it uh, showed that in a study at Johns Hopkins, those women who had good normal progesterone levels were only had only one tenth the risk of any sort of cancer. Isn't that amazing compared to women who were low in yes. progesterone? So there was, uh, I was beginning to find out these things from the patients and then finding that, yes, it was in the medical literature, but no one had taught it to me. No one had taught it to my colleagues. It wasn't what was being taught in school. In medical schools. In the medical schools, right. And uh, uh, the business about cancer picked up when I began reading about the... Um, uh, xenoestrogens, the oh, industrial yes. pollutants. Remember in the mid 80s, right? Uh, they started having these uh, reports of the studies of uh, animal t a a species that were at risk of dying mm -hmm. out. There was a die off of the alligators in Lake Apopka and the fish in the Great Lakes, and uh, cancer was part of that too. Uh, then they realized that the synthetic estrogen that they had used. Uh, earlier, 25, 30 years ago, was really not an estrogen. And uh, when given to the pregnant mothers, remember the young girls that were born were at more risk for cancer That's the, right. of the cervix, cancer of the vagina, yeah. and so on. Wasn't that the di diethylstilbestrol? Right. The uh, artificial... Uh, 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 yeah. DES, DES, right. right. Here it was given, thinking it was going to help, and it was found that this it was... It was creating the cancer. And a new name started to show up in the literature, the xenoestrogens, the foreign estrogens. Yeah. And more and more they found that it was, uh, that these were the same, that the petrochemicals that were used in insecticides and, and in plastics and uh, in the uh, backing and the, uh, the glue-like uh, adhesives, mm -hmm. uh, that these uh, outgas molecules that are like DES, they are very potent estrogenic uh, compounds which are toxic and uh, they, they're foreign to our metabolism, and they were called the xenoestrogens, now they're known as xenobiotics. Yes. And all of this began to mesh together. Here I was preventing estrogen dominance, I was restoring natural progesterone, they weren't getting the cancer, their bones were working better, they weren't getting uh, the uh, complications, and uh, it was amazing to me that in the last two years this has all fit together to form a unified view. Yeah. But it didn't start out that way. It's something I've learned. No. And uh, this is one reason I wrote the book, to uh, try to tell people that uh, estrogen dominance has become an epidemic in the United States. The people are getting the estrogen from the food, they're getting it from the... From, ex or what they say today, from the pesticides. Sides. And the environment. Uh, well, you uh, label them xenobiotics, but they know the terms uh, okay, pesticides. That, and I think what they're doing today is they're uh, taking all of these chemical pollutants and they're uh, using the term pesticides, although that's only one of them. And right. Yeah. Right. And, but what we have is... Um, an epidemic of women who are estrogen dominant. Not only are they getting all these xenoestrogens, but because of the damage that has occurred to their ovaries as a result of exposure to these during their embryo life, if you can imagine. Yeah, that's... But shortly after conception, as the embryo starts to develop, their tissues, the ovaries uh, in the females, the testes in the men are developing. And if the mother's been exposed to these xenobiotics, those tissues are damaged. And so when the females are born, grow up, have to function with their ovaries that have been damaged, the follicles wear out when they're 35, 36 years old, and their progesterone is falling, 
and they're arriving at menopause with osteoporosis well underway. They're getting their breast cancer earlier. They're getting their cancer of the, the uterus earlier. Yeah. This is all part and parcel of a poisoning of estrogen yeah. and a lack of protection from progesterone. There was an item in the uh, New York Times about the fact that uh, uh, young men were uh, deficient in sperm. Sperm, sperm count is declining. And of course, you find another scientist who comes along, and uh, that kind of information seems to be purchasable, you <laughs> see, and uh, claiming, oh, well, it isn't so. But I don't think we, we as individuals don't have to worry about the commercial aspect of it, and we have to take control ourselves. Well, it appears that uh, only by people grasping uh, what is happening will, ch will change occur. I don't think change is going to come because the pesticide companies voluntarily <laughs> reduce the give up. Give of course up. Not. Right. So we're just going to have to do things so that they change their direction somehow. Right. Um, I wanted to say also that I think it was very important that by good luck I chose using the natural hormone. And by that I mean the same hormone that the human body makes. And I think this is what's critical. Another problem that related to that is that in the medical profession, doctors are led by the same companies that make the pesticides. These are the companies that, that make, make the medications, the, the drugs. And it's artificial again. And these are artificial in the sense they are not the same as human. They are synthetic. They're different. They're foreign. Different doctors who have looked into this call them by different things. But something like Provera and so on is used as a substitute That's for right. progesterone. And these do not have the protecting qualities of real, real progesterone.